And this is a quick video that's going to document and di diagram and describe the four main ports you'll come across when you create an OpenZD overlay network using the Express install. For starters, you'll see there are the three main components of an OpenZD overlay. You have a client, you have a controller, and you have routers. And you, these, are the com these are the common ports that you'll see when you run the Express install. First port you'll see is port 8441. This is the port the clients connect to. It's in the section of the controller config web.name where it has a name of client management and the PKI section inside of that sub key has, is described by the dot identity subsection. So all of the PKI will have an identity block that looks the same. This one from the express install is down in the web.name client management dot identity section. That's where you find the PKI for the API, the REST interface. The port is going to be described in the same section under bindports.address. Uh, you'll, you'll see that when you look in there. And that's the port that clients connect to the controller on the REST interface. The ZDCLI also uses this port. Next, continuing on with the controller, you'll see the port that routers connect with. Routers connect on port 8440 if you follow the host it anywhere express install. Routers are also, uh, sorry, the uh, control plane is configured at the root of the config file or the top. So you'll see an identity section for the PKI, but it's way at the top and it's, it does not have the prefix of web, just identity. And the port is controller CTRL dot listener. And that's where that port is configured. Next, you'll see the port that clients connect to routers over. It only has, routers only have an identity section. So when you look in the routers config file, you'll see the identity section. Routers can optionally have alt server certs. We'll maybe go into that in a later date, but that's how you would allow things like Let's Encrypt or other third party certificates to be presented there. You can present more than one certificate you can present the one that comes when you run the express install and then one other set of certificates and that will be how clients connect to the data plane so here the client would connect to port 8442 which is the data port this is declared in the listeners.binding section of name edge options that advertise that's where you find the port and this would be a router that has a link dialer without a link listener, because you can see it has no port open that the routers connect on, unlike the other port that the router that you will see in a second. And it does have the edge configured because a client is connecting to it. Finally, we have the port that routers connect to other routers over. By default, it will be port 10080. It's also only got the identity section and the port is mentioned in the link that listeners are binding where the transport is the binding type and then the advertise section in there. And so that's the ports that we're going to be looking at. Next, let's look at the PKI and how it's done. If you bust open the ZD CLI functions, you'll see at some point the function create PKI is invoked. Create PKI starts off by creating three certificate authorities. The first certificate authority is for the overlay network itself, the management plane, the control plane, if you will. This is the PKI that routers will use to connect to the controller with. The next one is the edge PKI. This is the one which the API port 8441 will use and will, um, this is the PKI for that particular port. And finally, there is a signing certificate authority. Signing certificate authority is what the controller will use to create that strong identity and send back to the uh, identity during enrollment. The signing CA is not covered in this particular diagram because it is used by the edge, not a port, which is open and listening that needs to be configured with PKI. You'll see these functions, this function is called three times, PKI create CA. And if you look at the function PKI create CA, you'll see that it runs the ZD CLI command, PKI, create, CA, 
passes a PKI root, passes the same, a CA file, and passes a CA name. You can see this is just parameterized. So when you pass in CD controller root CA name, edge controller root CA name, signing root CA name, you'll get three different certificates created as long, along with keys for the CA. First thing you can see it does, is it checks to see if the key exists. And if not, it runs, go ahead and run the PKI create command. And that's all the PKI create CA does. Those three CAs, you do not need to use three individual and discrete CAs. Three CAs were used and uh, are shown here to demonstrate the fact that there are three basic PKIs that can be configured. The controller, the control plane, the edge, and the signing CA. You can use one CA for all three of these things if you so like. And if you do, then you, uh, particularly in the controller, you do not need to specify, flipping back to the slides for a moment, you would not need to specify this particular identity block. You could leave it commented out if you were only going to use a single certificate authority chain, PKI. Uh, let's go back to the code again. So we create, first thing we do is we create three CAs. Those CAs are long lasting and they last for approximately 10 years. And they are the root of the rest of the PKI. Next thing we do is we make an extra intermediate. We don't have to worry about that. You don't need to do that, but the, the express install will create a chain of certificates for um, demonstration purposes only. But this is an intermediate and this is just creating the name so this, is, this will be the name of that intermediate, which you can see is used down here on uh, line 11. Then we'll call PKI create intermediate. So let's take a look at what PKI create intermediate does. Create intermediate just calls PKI create intermediate. PKI root, it gives it where the PKI root is. And then what CA wants to be the owner of this intermediate? gives it an intermediate name, gives it an intermediate file name, and then a max path length. So the max path length indicates how many certificates can be, um, how, big the, how big the maximum depth is of the certificate chain. So if you pass a path of length of one, then you can only have a depth of one. If you pass no path length, then it defaults to whatever the default is, which I think is unlimited, but I don't know. So check the CLI, I didn't know what, the default actually is. Again, this is just demonstration. You don't need to use a max path length. But again, PKI create intermediate just calls PKI create intermediate. So here we go. We're going to create our intermediate for the controller, for the edge controller, for the signing certificate, and then for that spurious intermediate, just extra intermediate certificate. And so the extra intermediate is going to use, uh, let's see, it's going to be used in the signing CA. It is not used in the edge or the controller CA. So again, we can probably ignore this extra intermediate one for now. And so now we've got a bunch of intermediate certificates created. Once we've got those intermediates created, now we need to finally create our server certificates. We do not need to create our PKI for our routers. The act of enrolling routers will we'll actually create the PKI for us. So we don't need to worry about router PKI. Great. We do need to worry about the two ports provided by the controller. So if we go back to the main diagram, port 8441, port 8440, those are the two that we have to worry about. We need server certificates for both of those. So what we do, we create a new controller server cert, and we create a new edge controller server cert. Let's take a look at what PKI create client server does. You can see create client server sets a bunch of variables. I'm reading it as I go. Uh, and then creates a, a server key. So actually tests to see if a server key exists. And if it doesn't, then it will create, it will call uh, ZD PKI create server. Again, passing a PKI root 
passing a CA name, passing a server file, the output directory or file name that you want it to be called, pass it the DNS that you want and the IPs that you want to be baked into the certificate. These will show up in the uh, DNS SANS, alterna uh, alternative uh, SANS, DNS SANS, yeah. Uh, alternative naming scheme. I can't remember exactly what that stands for right now. No, I need to know that. Give me one second. I'll go look that up real quick here. We go and we look at any certificate. Certificate is valid. View the details. Never remember exactly what it's called. Subject alternative naming session section. Is that what it is? This is GitHub, not what, not the one I want. I want EC2, my server. Let's just go to this one instead. Certificate subject alternative name. That's where it shows up. So the DNS, whatever you specify in the DNS will show up in here and IPs will show up in here as well. So if you had an IP based example and find one very quickly. There we go. DNS, DNS, DNS. IP, IP. So this, these values are important because without them, you cannot verify the certificate as who it was meant to be intended for. Uh, the server name and, the, uh, and then the server name. This is just the name of the certificate. And that's all create server cert does. It also will create a client cert because sometimes you need to present a certificate to a piece of equipment. And so a cert file is created as well. All right, that goes in the server, the cert section of identity. If I were to look at an identity section very quickly here, bring one up. There is a cert section. This is the client certificate, a server cert. This is the server certificate, the key, which is the key for both the cert and the server cert and a CA section. So what we will do is we will reuse the key file that has been generated from before in this block up here, create PK, a PKI create server, we'll create a key and a cert. We'll reuse that key file to create a client certificate. That's very important. That key once created should never be removed or recreated or you'll have to recreate your whole PKI. And that is basically what happens. So if you look at the create PKI function, and to recap, we will create three CAs. We will create some intermediates. In this case, we would create three, but I made four. And then we'll create two server certificates. And that is a very quick overview of the PKI required for the four ports for an overlay network, for an OpenZD overlay network. Hope that helps.